So in last month's used PC parts hunt of the month, we picked up 12 PCs in total. If you haven't seen already, put the link up here. And I've also uh, damaged my finger, well actually my thumb, in the Alienware uh, PC build where we were sort of cleaning that up and getting it ready. But anyway, here are the three PCs that were outstanding that Les had at his house that I couldn't pick up because they couldn't fit in my cars. We already picked up a heap of different uh, PCs. And what we're gonna do now is essentially a tech yes hurricane. So today I'm gonna be like a one-armed tech yes citizen and uh, we're gonna be turning these into gaming PCs and uh, seeing what value we can extract as well as taking a look at each PC case by case. Uh, but first things first, I think I'm gonna clean up these OEM PCs. We've got so many of them. They're packed full of screws, motherboard, CPUs, RAM, and even SATA cables, believe it or not. So here's all the motherboards here now. We've got them with the face plates. We've pulled them out. And a lot of these don't even need any converters or anything. They've just got 24 pins and they're gonna work really well with gaming PCs. But we still have to piece out cases and power supplies for these particular builds. And uh, here is the current rubbish pile that we've got here. So all those OEMs, you generally, I don't need the power supplies from them because they're usually only like 150 watts at best. And even a 1050 would be pushing those things. Uh, we've got some motherboards there from the previous uh, parts hunts that kind of had those problems with the security messages and stuff. So I'll probably just flip them individually to someone who has time and wants to tinker around with them. And now over here, we've got a heap of SATA cables. It's always good to uh, mass any screws or SATA cables that you can find. And we've also got the hard drives that we pulled out of there, two 250 gigabytes, one terabyte, and also a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And uh, here we are now with the first of the builds completed, but there is a little problem already, and that is the uh, secure boot function on the graphics card itself. So we've got a 1060 in here, and it just looks like it's not going anywhere. I've left that for about five minutes now, and yeah, you know, now it's just turned off. But oddly enough, this case isn't too bad. It's 49 Aussie dollars, comes with RGB fans at the front, little RGB controller on the top. And I've added in a blue fan here and also a blue LED strip. So giving it a little bit more bling than it otherwise would have. But yeah, you can just hear this thing just beeping constantly. It's going to be a case of me switching over the graphics card and then putting in an old school graphics card just to get into the bus and see if I can change some settings around and then try and put this graphics card back in. But the problem is, is that with one arm, it's actually quite hard to do all this. So doing these PC builds is taking me a long time. It's like literally taking me at least 10 times longer to build a PC than I otherwise would. This is painful, but it's gotta get done. <laughs> actually, right as I turned off the camera, it started booting into Windows. This is actually getting very interesting now. So I'm gonna try and install Windows and then see what happens because this is quite the odd one. We cannot 
and will not fail. So here we are with the MSI uh, GTX 1066 gigabyte. Same thing's happening. There's no, uh, I guess, legacy support. I think that's the one you need. Apparently some of the Nvidia cards have it. So I'm just sort of switching now between cards because the same problem's happening where it's just not booting properly. It will boot eventually to Windows, but it's stuck on a basic display driver. So we're just gonna keep cycling through some GPUs until we get the one that hits the mark. So we've got an RX 480 this time. There's just absolutely no signal at all. So we're gonna put this build aside for now and see what we can do. So now we've got an Acer board in this build here that's doing the exact same thing. And so, you know, it's one thing to do my thumb, but now it's another thing to just get problem after problem. But yeah, that's life. So now it's getting dark. I had to change around this motherboard and with a, a disabled thumb, it's kind of hard, but we got there and this is now working. So one of the four builds that we're whipping up here is finally alive. And you gotta admit those, I mean, LED fans, look at them. So damn good. And then you've got the LED strip in there too. And here we are with the next PC, and of course, this one just isn't even booting up properly at all. Like, after about five seconds, it just shuts off, it doesn't give out a signal. So I've tried unplugging everything, tried plugging everything in again, tried changing RAM, tried changing power supply, so... <sighs> this stage, I am starting to get a little bit frustrated. Well, here we are, we finally got a fix, changed the motherboard around, and it ended up being the 1050 Ti. So the 1050 Ti we had is not giving out a signal. So we got a 1060 in here instead. And uh, going to, yeah, get this on the road. And uh, here we are with the uh, third build. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. But this fan is like just running at full speed. So temperatures are absolutely fine on the CPU. So we're three for three now. This is the third PC and it has another problem. Solution is at hand though. And a low noise adapter fixed all our problems. So here's the last of the builds here. And uh, like, okay. I don't really know what is going on at this stage. This is the fourth build and yeah, we've fixed up the other three PCs. They're all ready to go, we've figured out all the problems, but this one just magically wants to turn itself off. So at this stage, it's pretty late at night. We're gonna figure out what's going on with this PC. And then after that, we'll have all the PCs lined up. They're all good to go. They're all ready to uh, clear out the studio so I can start moving on to some juicy content like X58 and X79 stuff. But there it is, that's the uh, last PC there. Looks like it died in the hurricane. So we've now got that PC working, it's in the morning and uh, this is the Lenovo board here that we pulled out so it is uh, not working properly. So it's actually a dud but one of the most interesting things is I've had this power supply turned off now for about probably about 20 minutes and this fan just keeps spinning. It's like, I don't know. It's one of those cool things I've never seen before. And yes, I've tried draining the power. It just, it's, it's a nice wonder of the world. So drain the power, keep spinning. It just keeps spinning. Told you. Anyway guys, in conclusion, sometimes things just don't go your way. In this case, every PC we built, uh, the last four anyway, they all had these little problems and it was really annoying, but we'll figure this last one out. It's probably the motherboard because I, we, we reused that motherboard from the previous build with the 1050 Ti because I thought it was the 1050 Ti and that is, like the 1050 Ti is a dud, it doesn't work. Um, but I'm guessing the motherboard doesn't work as well. So sometimes these problems, they just happen and you just keep moving, you just keep moving. And uh, I mean, like couple that with my thumb, which is like, you know, make sure you hit that like button as well because YouTube doesn't have a stitched up thumb button. So um, <laughs> besides that, 
When it comes to building PCs, these things happen. I just, I've learned to just go, bah, let's quickly diagnose it, change memory, change power supply, uh, take everything off, reset the CMOS, do all that stuff quickly and go through it, change the motions, and then you quickly come up with what the problem is. So in this case, yeah, we're gonna change this motherboard. And it also sucked that those Acer motherboards, they don't support the NVIDIA graphics cards to boot from the get-go. I didn't know that. I thought the Acer motherboards were like the holy grail. Uh, since they didn't need any proprietary connectors as well. But that's the way it goes sometimes. We've got three or four motherboards of my OEM boards that aren't working properly. So that's a little bit annoying. Uh, but regardless, if you guys know uh, decent graphics cards that work with the uh, Acer boards, let us know in the comment section below because I will keep them aside. It's just, you've got to pair them with those boards that work properly. And I went into the BIOS, there was no secure boot option as well, so we're out of luck with that setting. And besides that, we now have whipped up a hurricane. I'm gonna be clearing out the studio, just as we said just before, and then we're gonna be moving on to some juicy content, cheap builds, as well as really cool stuff, different stuff, and then getting back to sort of that X58 and X79 grind as well, finding out what's up with that. And I'll catch you guys in another Tech Yes video soon. Make sure you hit that like button, as we said before and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.